This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. After a weekend of pure chaos from start to finish, we get to close things up with two teams that have definitely never frustrated us in the past. It is the Cowboys at the Buccaneers to round out Wild Card Weekend. We're going to break down our thoughts on that game, get you set for the contest wrap up Wild Card Weekend, and let you know where we're seeing value right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com joined here once again by ryan williams check him out on twitter at ryan alexander underscore w ryan we're getting pumped for tonight's game but uh that slate of games this weekend was bananas how are you doing today <laughs> oh I'm, I'm doing well i mean you know they don't call it super wild card weekend for nothing jim so uh we'll just let that be what it is uh definitely i mean an, an incredible slate of games you know you love to see when they when they get it right, I guess, quote unquote, um, where, you know, I think we were, we were a little bit worried there that the Chargers Jaguars game was going to be so lopsided that I was just, you know, gonna, gonna mute Trevor Lawrence on Twitter, uh, because I didn't want to see people <laughs> dragging him through the mud. Uh, but yeah, what an incredible game from Jacksonville. I mean, you know, shout out to the Miami dolphins yesterday, uh, Skylar Thompson, the receivers let him down, um, 100%. Um, but you, you know, you, you just love to see when, uh, you know, those high totals or high spreads, I should say, um, can, uh, you know, be alleviated by some, some good play and, and any, any given Sunday, any given Saturday, Thursday, whenever they're going to play the games, Jim, this is why they play the game because you never know what can happen. Uh, just ask the Vikings. I was very much with you on the Trevor Lawrence thing on Saturday because I had the Jags money line. And so like, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> Mark, this is a loss. It's whatever. And it was like, I tweeted at one point after he threw his fourth pick, I was like, you know, he's just trying to drag down their win total for next year. And it was like, (laughs) kind of like copium for me. And it was like that, that meme where it's like the person like pulling the happy face away and you can see that they're like stewing underneath the the happy face. That was me tweeting that out. And then all of a sudden it's like, "Uh, oh, oh, are they doing, they doing some stuff here? And I was positive. They were going to miss that field goal. Like, I was like, I know how this uh, goes. Faith in Riley Patterson, huh? That's right. Like, I I was like, okay, I took the money line. If I had taken two and a half, I wouldn't have to worry about this. I don't have to worry about a block kick, which I was like, you know, also kind of because I had them in a teaser as well. Um, And I was like, okay, if it if it settles on eight, you know, that's that's not that's not ideal. It's not the end of the world. Not ideal. Um, But like. I, I feel like this is going to be a miss. And I was just like, it was doomsday. But like, you know, I was like, okay, they gave me a fun ride at least. It was a good game. I got to enjoy that. And the kick went through and I was like, okay, this is this is a great day. And like, that's not the first time that's happened with them. I had their money line, the Ravens game where they had that comeback, the, the Cowboys game. Okay. So luckily I ran my numbers for next weekend no value in the Jags against the Chiefs so I don't have to worry about that because they're just an absolute buzzsaw that I don't want to deal with um so I think that that's a relief to me but honestly that game despite being like very clearly the best game like all the other ones were great too um and, and it's not just because you know having like money on the Jags and stuff like that but that was just a fun weekend overall and I I hope we get to run it back again next week and honestly Ryan like Looking at the quarterbacks and play next week, we might get to run it back again with more fun there, too. Yeah, I mean, just looking ahead, you know, you look at headlines here, Jags plus eight and a half, 93 percent of the money coming in on the Jags, 73 percent of the bets. Uh, Bengals plus four and a half on the road against Buffalo. We know what that game is going to mean in general. Um, 85 percent of the bets coming in, 68 percent of the money. Uh, and then Gi- Giants and the Eagles, you know, we get a we get a divisional matchup in the divisional round of the playoffs. Giants plus seven on the road. Uh, they're getting a bulk of the money to 69 percent. So, you know, uh, the early the early shot bets are coming in uh, on these teams all on the road, actually, uh, yeah. where people are loving, uh, loving getting action there. So that'll be a fun one to d- discuss next week. Yeah, I've got the Jags uh, Chiefs game at seven and a half right now in one model and the other model it is at 7.8. So not enough value to eight and a half for me to to bet and I am 
delighted about that. I don't want to <laughs> worry about that. You know, no action is good action, as evidenced by that uh, that Vikings Giants game for me on mm. uh, Sunday as well. So you tried to uh, tell me. I, no, I mean, like, hey, you got the you had the over in that game. Um, I did, I but believe. yeah, the three. Yeah, but you know, you had the over. That's you know, one yeah. for one or one for one for two. You know, still counts for sure. Um, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll talk more about that on Thursday show to get you set for those. But today, we're gonna break down Cowboys versus Buccaneers and let you know how you can finish off your weekend, hopefully on a high note. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast. Big week ahead. We've got our work. Our uh, divisional round first look is coming up tomorrow. We'll have that, and also we'll talk some PGA betting with Brandon Gadula, NBA and NHL on Wednesday with Tom Vecchio. We'll have Ryan back on Thursday to break down the divisional round. And then on Friday, we will be talking player props. So that is the week ahead here on covering the spread. A lot of good stuff as always to get it as it is posted. Make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast and also check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page. Also for tonight, if you want some DFS action, the NFL Monday Million is live on FanDuel for the Cowboys versus Bucks. Just pick five players, stay under the salary cap, and compete for your share of $1 million in total prizes, including $200,000 to first place. All of that for just a $9 entry fee. To get yourself entered, download the FanDuel app or go to FanDuel.com. Eligibility restrictions apply. Now let's dig in here to the Cowboys at the Buccaneers. We'll talk about the markets in a second right now due to the Cowboys as two and a half point favorites. The total in this game is still hanging at 45 and a half. Ryan, before we talk about those specifically, what is your top down view of Cowboys versus Bucks? Uh, my top down view. Well, we talked about this earlier and I just don't know. I mean, I, I, I do know, but <laughs> it's Brady at home in the playoffs um, you know, the number at two and a half there, the, the Bucks getting two and a half points. Sure. I mean, I guess that probably feels appropriate when you look at how the season's been going. But I mean, when you look at how Dallas has been playing down the stretch and like, you know, what McCarthy showed us uh, with this team in the playoffs this far, I, I just don't know how you can think that they should be necessarily favored. Like it should be more of a pick them to me um, in this matchup. Maybe, you know, what, one and a half is is where I'd feel comfortable about it. But if this is going to be a one possession game, let alone just needing a field goal, like at home, Brady gets the ball last minute. Like, I, I you know, there's just so many different scenarios where I could talk that in. Also, just in, in, in general, with the way that this offense has been playing, um, you know, the past couple of times, they're hitting their stride at the right time. And this is the reason why Todd Bowles probably let the starters play a little bit in week 18, um, just to make sure that they were fresh here to be able to handle business. The Dallas Cowboys, on the other hand, they've been dealing with some injuries and woes um, the past couple the past couple of weeks. Um, and so we'll see, you know, how healthy they are. The front seven for Dallas is really going to, you know, they're going to have to make, they're going to have to make their presence known, um, especially with the injuries that are up front for Tampa Bay. But even then, I mean, this is something that they've been dealing with for a while, Tampa Bay, that is. And I expect them to get Leonard Fournette involved. I expect the receivers to be involved heavily. Brady's probably going to pass 40 plus times in this game. Um, and they're, they're just going to, you know, try and, have their way and make another run here what could be Tom's last year uh with Tampa so for me yes the overall lean in this game is that it's playoff Tom time and I cannot put hard on dollars on the Cowboys until they show me that they can prove it um especially not having a home game here is that enough where you want to take the Bucks plus two and a half or is that more just a lean for you uh, I've taken the Bucks plus two and a half. I've taken the Bucks money line. Uh, I know it's changed a little bit, uh, but I did. Uh, what is it currently at here? It's loading. Yeah, one twenty is 120, the money yeah. line. Yeah, I, that probably is where I got it at um, on Thursday. I think like right after we talked. Yeah, uh, and and yeah, I feel I feel good about that, especially knowing like what it's going to mean, you know, for the Bucks to win here and a lot's been made about you know Tom Brady's record against the Dallas Cowboys and and things of that nature seven and oh um so I know that's going to be talked about a lot of the money uh and a lot of the bets have come on the Tampa Bay side of things which you know usually I'm team fade the public but this is just kind of one of those spots that feels like we know the outcome before the outcome's been played out Right. Uh, for me, we talked about this game on Monday last week, and I took the Bucks plus three when it was still there. With it being a two and a half, um, I've got the Cowboys here by 1.62 in one model and by 0.23 in another. So 
the other model shows a bit more value in the Bucks here, which is surprising to me because that model has loved the Cowboys all year, which I think is an in indication of what you were talking about, where the Cowboys really did struggle down the stretch. And that does matter um, to an extent for sure. Now, the one thing that's positive for them is they get Tyler Biotish back uh, this week. Biotish has a high ankle sprain. He's their center. And he's not going to be 100% because it's a high ankle sprain. Those can take a long time to recover. But having his brain out there, I think, is more valuable than having, you know, fully healthy Tyler Biotish. Like having just has his brain um, at center, I think, is pretty valuable to the Cowboys. So I do think that helps a lot. I also did take the under in this game. It has not moved at all since I took it. Uh, 45 and a half. It was minus 115 when I took it. It's minus 114 right now. So it has stayed almost exactly the same the entire way. And... I still feel okay about that. My slight concerns are the same ones we discussed on Monday, where a the Cowboys secondary is so beat up right now, where you could see the Bucks kind of going similar to what they did against Panthers, who also had a super banged yep. up secondary in that game, where they kind of you know flame throw downfield, and also both these teams operate at a very fast pace. So those are the two things that concern me in terms of the total. Um, we did see a lot of points this weekend. I don't think that was super surprising honestly i think that you know a lot of it made a lot of sense where we saw the points come so i'm i still feel okay about the under my conviction in it is a little bit lower because there's been no movement in my favor since then but any read for you on 45 and a half ryan yeah i i actually kind of like the the over here yeah. um and the and the reason being is just because like the i mean either one of these teams can force the other's hand right and i think right. that's either going to lead to just kind of maybe sloppier play, which then will lead to shorter fields, um, which could lead to more scoring. Uh, so, right. so, you know, that that's kind of what I like because we, we know everything's been talked about with this Tampa defense, which has kind of changed over the course of this season as compared to last season. But I still feel like the best path for the Cowboys' success is through the air, not mm -hmm. via the run. Um, so we'll see if they're able to get CD and Michael and, Dalton going here um but also you know just the opportunistic defense and the way that they play you know if they are able to get sack fumble interception there give them some short fields lead to more points and then we know that Tampa like I said I just I just have a feeling that Tom's going to be out there just kind of slinging it all over um so I and the pace for both of these teams is is pretty high from the regular season so yeah. I do think that this kind of leans to an over here um you know it wouldn't it wouldn't be surprising as everybody's kind of talked about this you know game going over uh, the total that we get a kind of sloppy matchup and it just ends up being like a 2017 type of finish but um I, I would lean over for me 2017 with me having three would be fine by me I think that's that's a great score I guess that's push but like you know I 2018 maybe you know we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll workshop the final score exactly Fair here enough. Let's go 2120. I don't care which direction. 2120. I'll, okay. I'll take that. Okay. Let's talk about some props in this game. Starting off on the Cowboys side, the talk of the town always has been the Cowboys backfield. We've seen a big split here between Tony Pollard and Zeke Elliott. I'm kind of operating under the assumption that Pollard gets a bump, given it's a high leverage game, but it is a tough matchup here. You know, they do like Zeke justifiably. He's played well down the stretch. What do you see on the Cowboys side in terms of props for tonight? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I love Tony Pollard uh, in this matchup. I was just going to look here just to make sure I had the number correct. So, yeah, 71 and a half on his rushing and receiving prop. You know, that feels kind of hefty. But when you think about, like, the best path for success with the Cowboys, like, I think that his, you know, prop there um, on the receiving yards, which I believe is at 20 and a half, you know, that feels yeah. great to get that number if you don't want to take the rushing and receiving, but he's at, you know, he's had the chance to break off some, some runs here, um, you know, kind of struggled in the first matchup uh, that they played in earlier this year. But I do think this kind of favors him over Zeke Zeke at 50 and a half uh, for just his rushing yards. That, that feels kind of high um, just knowing how it's been for him in this matchup before and knowing what the timeshare is going to be like, it's, just, it's, I mean, I probably won't bet it, but you know, if I was, you know, guns in my head. If somebody said, you know, let pick one on Zeke, I'd probably lean the under there. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think this is a phenomenal matchup uh, for Tony Pollard. And I think he's, you know, probably the second best weapon that they have on this team outside of CD Lamb. Yeah, they've had, um, what is it? Uh, seven games since Zeke's ca Zeke came back. And here are Pollard's 
rushing plus receiving totals in those seven games. 189, 61. Mm-hmm. So that's a miss. So uh, yeah. 106, that's a hit. So two and one. 62, that's an under. Uh, 106 over, 80 over, and then 20. But that was in that uh, that Commanders game where he played just 44.6% of the snaps. So he got okay. pulled early. So he's four and three to the over in those games if we assume he doesn't get a bump. Like if, he, if we assume he keeps the same role. And right. I think... I'm not saying it's like a 90% chance he gets a roll bump, but I'm saying I think it is more likely than not that his roll increases tonight from where it has been. Yeah. So Pollard to me is the guy I'm turning to in terms of not only just that market, the rushing plus receiving, you mentioned the receiving as well at 20 and a half. I think that makes a lot of sense, but also I don't mind aggressive markets with him. Like I wish we had alt uh, rushing plus receiving markets. That would be, Really tempting for him. That would be phenomenal, yeah. I'd be into that. But also, uh, we'll talk about touchdown bets later. He's plus 190. I think that is a <laughs> very good number uh, for Tony yes. Pollard. So to me, I kind of think it's across the board. Ding into Pollard props. You highlighted the rushing plus receiving. I think that Brandon Gadula on, um, we talked to him on Thursday or Friday. He did not talk about that. Uh, that's I was looking at that because it's logged in my bets because I have that one personally. Um, so Brandon has the power anytime touchdown. I have the power rushing plus receiving. So we're kind of checking all okay. the boxes here. Uh, we're all on board with Pollard. What could go wrong with that? Yeah. One more thing on Pollard, Jim. Uh, yeah. Receptions for him is at two and a half or at least earlier this week. And that was at uh, plus 116. Uh, now, again, that was earlier this week. I believe it was on Friday when I got it at that number. Um, it, could, it could have changed just a little bit slightly because the anytime touchdown prop, I got him at 185 and he's up at 190. So, I mean, things are changing all across the board for it's only probably there. But over over two and a half receptions, I just had to had to get action on that. His target totals in those games are six way over. I mean, like if this is targets, not catches, but six, two, three, right. five, five, eight and one like. They're getting work in the pass. They're giving him work in the passing game. I think that that's a very plus, uh, plus 116 over two and a half. I'm going to actually check to see if I can get that right now, too. Um, okay, let's slip things over. Actually, do you want to talk any the pass catchers in the Cowboys? Or do you want to talk about the Bucks? Over two and a half is minus 128 right now. So, wow. Yeah, there's, okay. There's that. Well, yeah. I'm not going to get so. a better price at Rhode Island Sportsbook. I can <laughs> guarantee you that. I'm going to check anyway just to be safe. Um, but any for more sure. pass catching props for you on the Cowboys side? Or are you going to flip over to the Bucks? On the Cowboys side, I mean, it's interesting when you see C.D. Lamb's over reception prop currently as it stands right now at plus 116 um, at six and a half. So, uh, you know, Dallas is going to need to get him involved. I mean, he's the most consistent weapon that they have on this team. And I I get it. That might feel like a lofty number. But we've seen time and time again, you know, these guys, especially like, you know, you have an alpha receiver. This He could just be a magnet, you know, for catches. And Listen, I, I I think it's a it's a pretty hefty number, but one that I'm willing to get on, knowing um, how how I'm projecting this game to go. Mm-hmm. Um, if it, if I'm expecting you know over points and I'm expecting you know shootout type of, of of capabilities here, I'm willing to get on that number there for CD Lamb on his on his yardage prop at 75 and a half. I mean, that's one that I'd be, I'd be willing to take some action to. Probably not a full unit, maybe a half a unit there. It's minus 113. I do think Gallup's over receiving prop at 35 and a half is interesting too because just from the, the big playability for him, like he could easily, you know, get a 25-yard catch or something like that. If he gets two or three catches, he could see himself over that prop as well. So, so that's kind of where I'm at um, on the Cowboys side right now. I did look at the Pollard thing at uh good old rhode island sportsbook love a good monopoly minus 174 over two and a half so good game Be- wow uh, beautiful uh, the app has been closed all right let's move over to the buck side here and see if we can find something else i can find instead we saw that offense perk back up in week 17 looked okay in the limited action in week 18 with no mike uh mike evans before the starters got pulled any value for you on their side so for tampa bay uh there's well, I should say there's there. I mean, I love all the Tampa Bay players. I, let, let's be honest. Uh, let's start up. Let's start it off with Leonard Fournette because playoff Lenny. Leonard, playoff Lenny. Like this is where I think we can get a lot of action over the field on Lenny, or I guess over the book on on Lenny because the field we're all in it together. Um, you're looking at his rushing prop at 35 and a half 
I'm just going to take that. Uh, I just expect him to be on the field. I know Richard White's there. Um, you know, even if it's a 65-35 split, like I still feel like he can get there, especially if they're in a position where they're able to kind of control this game. Like I think they're just going to churn Lenny and let it, let him kind of get going. Um, if they are, you know, kind of just – taking them to the woodshed, then maybe we see a little bit more Rashad White. But this is this is kind of one of those instances, especially with the, you know, Rashad White's probably, and, and I love him, but he's one mistake away from, like, Leonard Fournette just being in there the full time. Like, the, Brady's not playing around. Like, this is the playoffs now. He's got, you know, Lenny's earned his stripes with Brady. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that number's just, just too low. Um, I have to get action on him. When we talk about the receiving props, Mike Evans, and I just want to make sure I have this correct here as we pull up the touchdown scoring props. So Mike Evans at plus 200, which is what I got it at earlier this week. Like that's just, I feel like a slam dunk for me. Again, we're talking about the favorite target, um, which Chris Godwin, you know, he's also plus 200 and he's, you know, got consistent numbers all across this year, but just the way that they got him going in the Carolina game, Mike Evans, that is, I would be shocked if they don't try and help have him help find Pater. Also with Russell Gage, Russell Gage has been the red zone leader for this team all year. This is where he's made his bread and brother bread and butter uh, in Gronk's absence. Russell Gage, anytime touchdown is plus 550. Like we've seen him, we've seen Brady look for him time and time again in the red zone. It's not, you know, a Kate Otten. It's, you, and, and that, right, we know what Dallas is going to do. They're going to make sure that Mike Evans in the red zone is covered. They're going to make sure that Chris Godwin is covered. So Russell Gage should probably be able to sneak past somebody um, and, and find a score, if we're, especially if I'm expecting points to be scored. Absolutely love that. I think that uh, um, the Lenny one makes a ton of sense. Uh, again, talking about Brandon here on Friday, he also had Lenny over 38 and a half rushing yards. So uh, you and Brandon very much on the same page. And Brandon is, uh, I think, 5-0 and o so far on the Friday props. So if you're on the same oh, page as him, cool. probably a good thing. Um, so that's got to feel good about Lenny. And the reason that I like that is not only the trust factor you mentioned, but also it seemed like Leonard Fournette's role increased a bit as he got further removed from his injury. And honestly, I don't blame them. Like he played okay in those games. Um, They played Rashad White deeper into the week 18 game. Uh, Fournette played a couple snaps in the first series, then sat the rest of the way. And then he tweeted playoff Lenny after the game. So, uh, you know, the the tweet narrative around uh, Leonard Fournette is in line there. His rushing plus receiving a 70 and a half. I also think that one is interesting, too, because he does get a ton of work in the passing game. I thought a bit about Rashad White under 14 and a half receiving yards, but I wound up talking myself out of it just because, you know, there are pretty obvious paths to an over there. Uh, but I do think sure. that the, the four net props in general, very enticing. I probably lean towards the rushing plus receiving just because of how much work he gets. But I think regardless buying into an expanded role for Leonard Fournette, similar to what we're doing with Tony Pollard. I do think that makes a lot of sense. Now you talked about uh, Mike Evans two to one. You've got uh, Russell Gage plus five fifty. We also talked a bit about Tony Pollard at plus one ninety four and any time touchdown. Uh, there was one more I wanted to ask you about. One that I saw that was enticing is Kate Otten. Uh, he is six to one to score a touchdown. I can't touch a Kate Otten yardage prop because he doesn't get yardage. I don't know if it's like not if it's in like his contract. He's not allowed to get more than like seventeen yards in a game. <laughs> um, but from a touchdown perspective, you're getting a guy who. In the past two games, he played with Cameron Brait, which was week 16 and 17. In those games, Otten had an 84, 87% snap rate. So even with Brait being active both those games, Otten basically didn't lead the field. He had seven and six targets in those two games, did literally nothing with it, which is why, again, I will not touch yardage props, but touchdown props, six to one for a guy with an 80% snap rate. I feel like that's kind of a turn down. So I think to me, in the non power department, I would lean towards Kate Otten at six to one as being my favorite. Uh, any thoughts for you on Kate Otten or any t- other touchdown bets you like? Yeah, Kate Kate Otten is is interesting. Um, I, I think I think you know any any of these any of these guys. It's it's fun to have you know a little bit of action on them um, because we know 
what they want to do 20 you know if they're at the 20 yard line even at the 10 yard line you know i think that they're going to be willing to pass um on second and third down so any of these guys is is fun to have action on um i, I do think that there is merit to taking brady at 15 mm. to 1 to score a touchdown i mean if they're on the one like we've seen we've seen him do this before just sneak it in like he'll he'll take it himself uh at 15 to 1 for a quarterback prop you know that's pretty incredible so uh just to have action on that i think is a fun one too yeah he had a rushing touchdown against carolina i think yeah uh in that game he had a, a sneak touchdown in that one um so it probably wouldn't pull a, a huntley where he you know gets it popped <laughs> out of his hands uh the trevor lawrence one i think it was on a two-point conversion where he just like a boop, like but he's like six foot six so you can kind of like just stretch armstrong you know yourself across yep. the goal line um but i think brady Michael jordan and space jam yeah, that's right. You know, um, you're in Looney Tune land, man. Do it. You can do whatever you want. Uh, Got to dream bigger. Uh, but yeah, I think that the Brady one is interesting, too. But it's a fun game. Um, it's it's Very an interesting fun. game for sure. Kind of like you said, I don't really know what to think overall. I'm hoping we get um, a lower scoring game, hoping we get the, the Bucks to at least keep this game close and keep it in a field goal. But we'll see how things play out for tonight. Any final thoughts for you, Ryan, before we close up shop for today? No, this is just, you know, this is fun, fun time guys. We get the Island game. So make sure you guys are being smart with your action, but definitely get a lot of action on that gear up for next weekend, divisional round. We're going to have a ton of fun matchups as well. Then too. Uh, can't wait to dissect those games with you, Jim. That'll be a fun one, but yeah, just, uh, you know, have, have fun. If you guys are, are betting Dallas because uh, everybody is on Tampa. So I know that Vegas is uh, rooting hard for you Dallas betters out there. Uh, yeah, I'm just glad I'm I, like, I thought I thought for the longest time because you knew this matchup was coming. I thought for the longest time I'd be betting Dallas and just be nervous the whole week. Like yeah. I could lose tonight. And, you know, the sleepy Tom narrative is in effect. It's a it's a primetime game yeah. for Tom Brady after his bedtime. Yeah. So, you know, that that's happening. But like, you know, I just feel a little bit carefree. If I lose, I lose. Uh, I'm much less nervous than I would have been had I bet the one up betting the Cowboys. So at least we got that going for us regardless. Hopefully we can finish out Wildcard Weekend on a high note because it has been a blast so far. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. I will give my first look into the divisional round tomorrow on the show. We'll also talk to Brandon Gadula to get his thoughts on some PGA action for this week. To get that and the rest of our podcasts, search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you hit subscribe because markets do move. We want to make sure you get these as soon as they're posted. And also check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page. Ryan, I appreciate you once again, as always, for swinging by for today. Good luck to you tonight. I'll talk to you once again on Thursday. Sounds good, Jim. Looking forward to it. That is Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Looking forward to talking to you all once again tomorrow. Enjoy Monday Night Football. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 